sometimes I think with other people because they see they see my age and they see that he's older than I am and they think oh remember your your um your stepmom when she met us she was like Robert but they call him by his middle name and she said you done robbed the cradle because <laughs> she thought I was a whole lot younger than what I was and uh when he told her he said no she she's not too much younger than me and I think because I am younger than he is they think that maybe it might be I may not be as mature or know as much but I don't think that's the case no that's not the case at all in, in a way most people well the majority of people say that women mature a whole lot faster, faster than men in a way so uh, that can be Absolutely, we know that. We know that. <laughs> well, do I do I act younger? No. Okay. No. She's very mature. All right. Brown points. You know, I've always been like an old soul, so I've never been like the type that like to go clubbing and stuff like that. I mean, I did when I was much younger, but. It was like, <clears throat> I've never been that type because, you know, I had Damien and so I always had a kid to worry about. So running the streets was never a big thing for me. So I don't think, you think it played? I, I don't think it may have played the part that people might feel that it plays because when you feel a certain way about someone, you don't really think about what that age gap is. Right. Um, there are times where it can play a part in how we communicate because I think for me being older sometimes I'm a little more stubborn and a little less likely to be open to certain ideas or thoughts um, but I think that is where some of the balance comes in because even when I get kind of set in my way so to speak um, she's always been great at just kind of opening the door or opening the book and helping me to understand her point of view. Even if I am completely opposed to it, at the end of the day, I can still respect where she's coming from and say, okay, yeah, you know what? We may have to kind of do things in that way. I don't. Not at all. I forget sometimes yeah. that I'm the oldest. A lot, yeah. I do, I do. I had this, you know, made up thing in my head before I met him, like, okay, my last marriage didn't work and he was, three years old, two years older than me, so I gotta probably go maybe five to 10 years older next time. And then when I met him and he was actually four years younger, I was like, but it just felt right. And I, I do, I honestly forget that I'm older than him a lot. I'm good. I'm experienced. Really? I got talent. Really? Skills. Okay. They bring a lot to the table. No. I could get AARP next year. See what I mean? See what I mean? That's 50. You get AARP. Yes, you do. Cause see, you see he's trying to embrace this thing, right? And I'm like... Okay, when you get there, let me see what you do. I'm going to be doing what I do now. Okay. This, this 40, I'm about to rock this 49. Y'all going to see this 49. Before 9 o'clock though, right? This 49 going to be a before rock it's gonna party. It's going to be before 9 o'clock. <laughs> this 49 going to be a rock party. Y'all going to be like, what is he do? Boy, don't take these 40s out with a bang. Because when I get them, baby. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's, it's been okay up until this point. So, we don't know what it's going to be like going into the next. Well, don't get it wrong. She got some old habits. What are that? She got some old habits. Like what? Like old people. Like what? Explain yourself. Um, See? Like around the house. No, yeah, like around the house. I don't know if this is old people. Because I had a ritual? No. Oh, no. That's okay. Like we, for instance, we could be downstairs. And then we go upstairs. We get upstairs, you know what she'll say? You left that light on down there. And I'll say, 
weren't we both just downstairs? She said, yeah, but you left that light on down there. I said, so you waited till we got upstairs. You told me that I left the light on downstairs. So now I got to go back down and turn it off. When to fix this, you could have just turned it off before we came upstairs. See, that's the old people stuff. <laughs> that right is there. not an old people that's thing. That's the old people stuff right there. Man, you get your brain. You're yeah, old people. You like dictionary or something because you don't know your old people stuff. You don't be saying old people. Can you tell me that? Look. Ain't nothing wrong with old. Old is a blessing. In the beginning it did. Uh, when I say in the beginning, because I always had an attraction to older women anyway. So now that I have a woman that's older than me, it, it, it doesn't feel like she's older than me. Because we have that same maturity level. See what I'm saying? Absolutely. So don't feel no different. Yo, my birthday. <laughs> it wasn't a date. Man, I don't know. That thing is off the chain. I don't know. Um, you was a part of that. Um, it was two years ago? Two, three years ago? I don't know what it was. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I just feel like... I mean, we had some amazing dates. We had some amazing trips. Um, I, I liked the time we went to Tennessee. That's the... And we went to Asheville. Mm -hmm. Right? Those were some good times. But... Uh, uh, I guess I guess my birthday wasn't a date by ourselves, mm -hmm. but um, we went to the gun range. That that was just different. That was a just different. A good day it was a, for it you. was a good day. It was it was different. Um, uh, most of the day was a surprise, but we went to the gun range at time. And it was just like I said, something different. wasn't nothing that we normally do. Mm -hmm. like the dinner, movie thing, that's what we normally do. But the gun range is just, it was different. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and then just the surprise thing at the top golf, right? Uh, the fans, all the friends came and stuff like that. But I remember that day like it was just like I think that was just like one of the one of the best days that we had. Um, I mean, we had some other good days too, but that that one just jumped out at me. Yeah, I would have to say, mm, I don't know. It would have to be crazy, but our honeymoon <laughs> because that was like a whole week. We oh, yeah, had, that was amazing. We had no kids. No worries. <laughs> at the time, we didn't have to come back to nothing. I wasn't working. <laughs> So it was just, you know, just relaxing and beautiful weather, you know. Um, and since we've been here, it's just our whole dynamics uh, have been different. So when we first moved here, he still was working in Virginia, uh, I mean in Vermont. I was blind. And I was living here. So we definitely didn't do a whole lot of dating then um, because he was gone. <laughs> he was gone and I was here by myself you know, getting acclimated to the city and, you know, the church and things like that. And then by the time he moved back, it was like, oh, let's have a kid. <laughs> so then Nathan came and it was just like, ah, you know, so like he said, like just having um, certain things, dates. I mean, we tried to, you know, of course we got Atlanta, we got Myrtle Beach, we got what else is around here. Charleston. I, I, think, yeah. like I think when we went to Charleston, that was good too. Was that Charleston? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was really, really good. Yeah, we got we to go to the Charleston. beach, um, just hang out. It was good weather. We ate, right? We put, went bowling, things like that, you know. Um, I bet you men drink off them. <laughs> and I think, you know, that was a really, really, really good time. But even then, it's just like coming back to life, coming back to kids. I don't know why that, you know, it's like when it ends. <laughs> It was good, but then it ended. But like I said, for our honeymoon, nothing ended. It was just like, this is good. We don't got nothing, life, nothing to get back to. That was just like <laughs> perfect. And of course, life will probably never be like that again. Yes, it will. When these jokers get old, get out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a long time from now. I'll take it. Like, I didn't have no worries. Like I said, like, I think, was it last year? Even for my birthday, somebody was able to get us, um, like, super super low discounted rate at this really really nice hotel at the beach and stuff like that and she was like stay as long as y'all oh, want yeah. you can stay yeah. i think so you you know nathan can stay with us and i was just like oh we just gonna stay overnight and i think that was about it my anxiety i was on i'm here 36 hours i was just like ah no I need to see my baby, you know. And so it's just like it's really hard for me now to enjoy um, 
with that anxiety but <laughs> me yes that's true so that's why i say but it had it was then not because we haven't done anything or we don't go anywhere and have a good time it's, it's hard to have a good time when i'm like is my baby okay what is he doing do we think i love him and i mean he's three now so i think it's getting a little bit better because now he can facetime me and he was like okay mommy i'm watching cartoon click oh uh, okay so it's like i know he's good but prior it was just like he can't talk can't walk i don't know what's going through his mind so it was just making me you know so now like if somebody said y'all can go somewhere i'm gonna be gone for a week bye deuces <laughs> no i didn't say with this baby i said with nathan <laughs> so we need to do that before may <laughs> before may because i'm sure that uh, that cycle will start all over again <laughs> I won't work. Can I tell you? Can I tell y'all to see if I'm right? Can I make mention? Matter of fact, can I like make a note of, note of it to see if I'm right? Uh, I think I know what she's gonna say. Yeah, I, I can't. They I ain't gonna lie. I can't tell you about that. From that first one to the last weekend, we went to a house party for Halloween, and that was all. Like everything we do is, I don't, yeah. I don't know if I have a best one. I don't have a best one. You got one that sticks out more than another? No. Maybe the first one, just because it was the first time, you know, that first experience. But oh, our first date. No, no, not our first date, but uh, well, a date. You said a date that stood out. Yeah. Oh yeah! Which one? Drive down the highway. Remember? I ain't gonna say what highway. <laughs> it was straight. I ain't had to make no turns. <laughs> now that's the one. You'll never forget. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you guys get an adult channel, we'll talk about it. But yes! Yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> we had fun going straight. That's all that's I'm saying. That's what we did. That's all I'm it saying. was amazing. Long, 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 I remember long, the first long. time me, her, and Kia went on a date. Me, her, and her daughter went on a date. And where we went? Out back. That was our first date. Now, is this part of the question? Maybe? No, but go ahead. Yeah, answer him. Okay. So, your best date? For me, one of our best dates was, I am not big on Valentine's Day. He, he kind of is, and was more so back in the day. I guess I've kind of worn him down a little bit. He's not too much like that anymore, even though he still observes the day. But he took me to the Marriott in downtown Washington, D.C. When was that? It was Valentine's Day. No, it wasn't. It wasn't? No. Okay. But you know what I'm talking about. Just you think sure about what I gave you and you'll know what it was. It wasn't Valentine's Day. I know what you gave me. You sure? That was, that was Christmas Oh, Eve. that's right. That's right. He's right. He's right. So we are saying the same thing, just, right? Just, I knew it was a holiday, but I'm thinking about all the red. That's what, it, that's what it is. I'm thinking about all the red that they had. Christmas has red in it. So, it was Christmas, or it was before Christmas, actually. And Christmas Eve, usually yes, before Christmas. it was. Are you laughing? What, I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm just saying, that, that Christmas Eve. It was the Marriott, one of, I think it was the JW, down in D.C., and he knows I love Christmas, I love the lights, the decorations, I love so he takes me down there, we're walking around the hotel, and I'm looking at all, all the lights and everything. I thought we were just kind of going in and see the sights. So he takes me to this room. Not one of the rooms that you would stay in, but it's like a big Lower level. dining room where they would have meetings and banquets and everything. There's nobody in this room. Sits me down. Gorgeous room, gorgeous room. 
And then this guy, this server, just comes out and starts serving me. So he had rented out the entire room just for me for dinner. So we're sitting there. I mean, it was just awesome. It's just so awesome. And that's when you gave me that um, that kimono. kimono. Yes, the kimono. And the, yes. And the, what else? Oh, the journal. Journals. Yes, because he was like, you're always writing she in the was journal. A, she was a writer. And it was the most gorgeous. I still have a journal. I mean, the, the binding on it was just beautiful. And it had, like, intricate colors. And it was leather bound. It was just beautiful. But then they served us all these awesome drinks. I mean, we had the whole place to ourselves. So that's my favorite thing. And the TV... I think it was something with the TV. Oh, you asked them to turn it on, and they did. Yes, oh, we on. had to move. Uh, but anyway, yeah. I, what did I write on there? Christmas Eve in the hotel when I reserved the whole lower level. Yes, yes. I don't know why I thought that was Valentine's Day. I knew it was a holiday. I'm just thinking red because all they had was like all these roses and stuff everywhere. It was just beautiful. Just beautiful. I thought that would have been. That is just the most awesome thing ever. And I thought I was just, I feel like I was a celebrity. All the time. All the time. What are we doing? And intentionally, like, what what are we doing? Where are we not, like, just random and, well, let's just call this a date since we ended up here. No, but it's like, what are we, we going to do? Yeah, what we, do you we on the phone. We Finding something to do in Charlotte, Googling, yeah. uh, Eventbrite, what we do on the we night. Do. We do. At least. We do. We do? Because neither one of us, well, I ain't gonna lie. She can sit in the bed and watch TV or read a book all day. I can't you don't do like it. <laughs> I, can, I will, I don't know. I, I just cannot do that. So we always moving. You know what I'm saying? Especially if it's a Friday or a Saturday night. And then we don't have to work, you know, we got energy. We keep energy. People always say, uh, how y'all keep y'all energy up? We just, we live every day like it's Friday. Mm -hmm. I ain't lying to you. So when people say, it's Monday, man, all right, all right. man, you better act like it's Friday. You and know? believe it or not, <laughs> we live together, we work, work together. together, we party together, we date together. We shower together. <laughs> like, Literally, in case of an emergency, is the only time we're not around each other. We drink out the same cup. <laughs> we are so. We are one. <laughs> I try. I tried to do a restaurant week last week. We did it. Restaurant week is a week, not two days. We only went to dinner twice. Four nights, what are you talking about? No. See, another seven. Four nights? Yes. No ways to take No, I didn't count that Cajun. Cajun. That was, that was dinner out. What the hell? That was. Okay, see, I didn't know you weren't counting. I mean, the we first went night we eat. went to a Mediterranean restaurant. Tuesday we went to a... Ethiopian restaurant. I, we was, I had told her, I said, I want to do create our own restaurant week. Pick out a, just say what kind of food you want. And I'll find a restaurant that we haven't been to. We're going to go. So I, tr I tried to date. I tried to do something different because mm -hmm. to change it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we get in the lulls, I call it. But she said, you don't do nothing. And I got to catch myself. I'm like, yeah, baby. So then I try to find something that we could do. But most of the times I rely on her a lot to find something for us to do. See, I don't deny it. Ain't nobody has something for all that demonstrative. That's her favorite word. Demonstrative. That's why I used it on her just now. That's her favorite word. You so demonstrative. See? Good job. Good job. Yes. I, I am usually good. The activity, yes, I'm the activity coordinator, yes, but it's really nice 
you know, we, we take up the stack on that sometimes. No, no, no. Don't go there in the kitchen. What? I thought you were going to say sometimes you would like that too, you know, from cooking. What, a, a recruit? A yeah, a break. That's why I'll take you to dinner. There you go. Problem solved? Because what, because I think sometimes what happens, and this is just my perspective, uh, when you remarry or you marry into that type of environment, sometimes parents can say, well, I have all the say, I have all the say. But really, when, when a divorce happens or a marriage happens and that person becomes a part of your child's life, you don't have that singularity anymore because you can't say, yes, you can help take care of my child, but don't say anything to them. You can raise my child in your home, but don't you spank them. Don't you, you send them to that. It, it doesn't work like that. It's like dividing your household because what goes with, for one child should go for every child. What's our house rule is our house rule. Now what you do at the other parent's house is that's the other parent. But we had to set the standard. And I think that was the most difficult for us is setting the standard and us being unified in what we believe was the right decision, what, how to handle and approach difficult situations. And it really made us stronger. The difficulty made us stronger. It may have been meant to bring confusion, but because he's transparent, I'm transparent. It was like, did you get that? Like, yeah, I got that too. But let's talk about that. And then we talk about what the solution is. Instead of me, sell, me saying, because sometimes as women we do say, hey, you, you need to work on that. You need to handle that. And him saying, well, I've done what I can, and, and it creates friction between us. So that didn't happen. We, I would say, I feel like this is a good approach, and this is how it should be handled. What do you think? And it worked. It worked. That way we're not biting at each other's neck. And we're unified, and then we can say, okay, this is what we've came up with. This is how it is. And external can determine how they want to deal with it. But internal, we're going to be unified. Yeah. So tell me about your uh, was a transition, because he's always been... Like, we had an instant family. Just insert Derek here. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, insert Derek here. So it was, I think it was more a challenge for him because Amy and I had already had a system. So there was a way that we did things and Derek coming in from not ever having a child and just coming into this family that's already there and trying to assimilate, it was kind of, I mean, initially it was good and then it was kind of rough. So, and yeah. then it kind of... I, I think initially, just like in a new marriage, new families go through like this honeymoon phase. Yeah. Where we having fun, we're hanging out, this is all great. And then, it gets and then real, real real life hits where, you know, you may not see eye to eye on discipline and you may not see eye to eye in on, you know, how to kinda do certain things. And me coming in like Amy has always had his dad, you know. <laughs> But he's being raised on my watch, and I'm feeling like, all right, well, I have a responsibility to make this young man a man at some point in time. And no matter how you communicate that to a mom, that's always the baby. That's my baby, you know. So I think there were times where we had challenges and difficulties there because I can be very assertive and stern at times. And they have always had a very laid back. I mean, he was disciplined, atmosphere. but it was just like, dude, let's try a little bit more love. <laughs> and she's like, she's she, 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 she make it seem like I had him back in the in the shackles in the back. Like, listen, you gonna go? I don't, listen, we gonna waterboard you. You know, <laughs> you know. Next time you are gonna do them dishes, I was like, okay? Man, that was kind of harsh. But again, I think a lot of that 
fine to, well, actually, you know, yeah. you know, this complete overhaul to the idea of becoming a family and then the fine tuning that came with it. Um, you know, they came from a very laid back, you know, oh, don't do that. Yeah. No, it was more than that. No, it's, it, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but, you know, I don't think I've ever heard, like, her dad raise his voice. He never had to. Never heard him raise his voice. He you know, never had the case to. May be, where I may say something. And it, it also comes in understanding the child that you're dealing with, too. Because it took me a long time to kind of really understand how Damien's mind works. It wasn't that he was ignoring me or intentionally trying to disobey me. His his mind just worked differently. But it's on to something else. Yeah, and he would be like, all right, I hear you asking me to do this, but before I get to this, I have to do this, this, and this. And I have to do those three things. Because if I don't do yeah. those three things, then I'm point. just going to, you know, this is going to become more than a challenge for me. So, it's just getting there. It's part of the journey. And, you know, like I said, it was some very, very difficult times uh, that came with that. But I think that we... Had, and he did a lot of reflecting on, when I was his age, I couldn't do... I'm like... That was like different generation, but A long listen, time ago... That comes with raising children. <laughs> you know, like there are things like when my mom comes to visit, she looks and she's like, I would, I'm like, mom, look, I get that. that. I get that. But this is how they're being raised now. You don't necessarily have to agree with it, but this is what works right now. And if we have to change that, then we, we have to make the decision to change that. <sighs> For me, <laughs> it was crazy because not only did I have, have to have a conversation, but to be quite honest, my oldest two, I had to put them out. Um, they were still living with me, but like I said, not to any fault of their own. They just had to learn because I've always been the dominant one in the family and they are mommy's boys. You know, I've always protected them and like I said, overcompensated because of what they didn't have and who wasn't playing their part and all of that. So for them, not only was there another man come in the house while they were smelling themselves and finally reaching manhood, um, they were sharing mommy with somebody, you know, and then there's these expectations that were never there because I'm, I was never a man, right? So I didn't know how to put that stuff in place. Um, so it was a lot and sometimes it has to get worse before it gets better. So they tried him a couple of different times, but they had to understand from me first <clears throat> This is not how this goes, you know? So this is my choice to be with this man and you can love it or leave it, especially when you're an adult, you know? Um, but we ended up, you know, I, I'm, I'm very, we're very close knit. So I gave him about two days to be mad, <laughs> called them, we're gonna sit down and have a talk. This is what's going on. This is how it's gonna be and this is why. And both of them at that time, they said, mom, we get it. You know, we're upset right now because it's new. My oldest son had just got out of jail, so you know, it was a lot, you know, and they're like, this is new, but we will look back one day and laugh at this. You live your life because we see you're happy. And at that point, the shift kind of started. But yeah, we had to do some real, yeah, <laughs> get right. <laughs> well, my kids, my son, he, he's 18 now, he's in the Marines, but he kind of, he just breathes through it pretty much. He just, he like me, he's very chill, laid back. <laughs> yeah. Long as ain't nobody getting hurt, he just smooth. He just cruised right along. Now my daughter, she she's another human being, <laughs> you know. Even before my wife, when women would come around, she'd give them that eye. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I told her it ain't nothing personal. She did it all, right, right. you know. And her concern was just uh, the the time, you know. Now daddy got to be with her instead of just me, you know, having a when I say literally, it boils down to when you pull up to the food line and it's her, my daughter, and me, and we all get out the car. My daughter wants to pull me on this arm and walk away, and she hanging in the back, and I'm trying to grab her, and, <laughs> you know. It's, but she, she's, she gets it now. Yeah. She gets it. And then my youngest son, I think, 
he had a different struggle from all of the kids because he still his dad is still a part of his life who I was married to but um he he didn't know if it was okay or if he was like going against his dad because he was okay with Mr. Gray you know but now like he said I mean the dust has settled and everybody is good everybody's good <laughs> A lot of prayer. <laughs> a lot of prayer. A lot of crying. A lot of prayer. Um, a lot of um, being willing to be part of. Um, not willingly, but you can't control how people act. You can't control their perception. You can only do right by them as much as you can. Yeah, and I think also a big part of our marriage counseling dealt with blended mm -hmm. family. So we got a lot of counseling and not only after, I mean, before we were married, but even after we were married, mm -hmm. we still went. We had to because, go back. Yeah, we had, because we had situations we had where. We had rough spot. Yeah, and we, we needed some help. We needed help. <laughs> so. Is, and, and, and you have, and in the blended environment, you have to be willing to pull on resources because we don't know everything and so um, I am my background is street so when when I'm in my emotions and my first thing is not to pray about it ain't no e Bowen coming out nowhere my first response is she or he don't know who they're messing with it could go down and I have to take a deep breath and say, now is your actions going to add to this situation positively, or is it going to add to this situation negatively? And I've and in my learning uh, recently, I started I started investigating and just trying to see why why people act the way they act and what am I doing? Take the inventory and make sure I'm not doing anything that could cause any negative um, negative actions or, or or hurt anyone. And I realized that you have people who are narcissists, you have people who are, are um, they just have a problem getting over uh, relationships and, and losing that control. And that, I feel bad, but there's nothing I can do about that. That's, a, that's an individual personal thing. And that's what you learn in blended family. You do what you can within your, your reach. And it's other people's responsibility to do their part. It has helped us, like when it comes to the children's mother, when it comes to my ex-husband, the kid's father, we don't speak negative about them. We don't, we don't bash them, but there are difficult situations and conversations you have to have sometimes with the kids, and we have those conversations in the most respectable way we can, and um, without putting anybody under the bus, because it's just, it's not productive is not productive. They need to, if, even if we're not unified, they need, the children need to think we are. Yeah. And that's how, that's how we deal with it. We, we collaborate together and then we go out. Yeah, because our, the children that my husband have, they're still young. Like, um, the youngest is, how old is she? 15. 15 and the oldest is 19. He'll be 20 soon. All my children are grown. Two different dynamics. But he still has to he still has to coach me with my children because I'm sometimes like you grown and on your own. Why are you calling me? What are you doing? And I'll get overwhelmed just as a parent. And then there are times I'm a mother of everybody. He's the father of everybody. So we have to have to manage. We have to manage them individually. All of them have different different needs. It's not an easy job. But it's a it's a rewarding job when you see things come out the way they should.
So, for me, I think it was a little bit, I don't, I guess you'll say, I don't know if it's easy or different for us because of our children's age. Um, when we met, they were from 10 to 20 at the time. 21, the, the oldest one had just turned, or was about to turn 21, so from 10 to 21. At that time, they weren't babies, but what we learned from that is, it's so important because you have to consider your children, but you have to consider yourself. So like he said, we had, a, we had some issues in the beginning, um, especially with my older boys, just never having a man in the home to be in charge. It's always been just mommy, you know, so a lot of that was like, sir, we got this. <laughs> We pretty much created the mess that we like, you know? So that, but at the same time, even though their, their feathers were ruffled and it seemed like it was chaos and they were hurt, I had to consider myself first because I knew it was a good situation and it was the right situation. So I had to consider my children, but I couldn't consider my children, if that made sense. I know that in order for them to be okay, I have to be okay. And so I was able to make that decision for myself which in turn helped them. Um, what was the question again? <laughs> how did children with the blended family, how did children impact? Well, I said that, a little, I touched on that a little bit earlier, but. Ooh. Those people. <laughs> <laughs> the freeloaders. Uh, yeah, so I have to say for me, um, these were my first. Damie was five when me and Carrie got together. But I have to say that Damie probably is the exception to the rule. He was extremely independent. He would get himself up for school, make go in the kitchen, breakfast. make his own breakfast. Um, you know, there were certain things that I had to do, like helping him with his homework, or we would sit down and uh, when he started to read, work helping him like with his reading and things of that nature. Um, he, he was cooking dinner for the family when he was like, how old was he? He, he had to be seven like, or nine? I'd say probably seven or eight years old. He opened up Damiano's. In Damiano's. The yes, he had, he had a, menu a menu and everything. I wish I would have saved it. Yeah, so um, he yeah. has been pretty remarkable in that, that aspect, that he's always been self-sufficient. And he would only really ask you for something if, if he needed it or if it was identified that, hey, listen, he's seven or eight and he's not going to do this unless <laughs> we make him do this. So, you know, that type of intervention, which is typical for, for parents. But then when... The odd couple came? Yes. The, uh, <laughs> the, the twosome, when they came along, that really kind of opened my eyes to what having children was. Um, and I think I've experienced every emotion possible. Uh, she still jokes to this day, like when my son had to go in for a simple procedure where he had to get a tear duct uh, that was blocked and he had to get it, you know, opened up. Um, and we were sitting in the, in the waiting room before he went in for surgery. And the doctor came and said, okay, one of you can kind of come <laughs> into another area. The other one has to stay here. Well, we're going to take him back now. And I remember I cried like a baby because they were taking my son away. My firstborn, <laughs> and I was just like, she was looking at me like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> like, <laughs> what is your problem? The nurses was looking like, at him everybody like, everybody was looking at me, and I'm like, but. Like, he had to be consoled. I'm sitting there pregnant. Christopher is about to go into surgery, but. They had to tell hey, listen, honestly, it was, to, I mean, in all honesty, that's, those are the moments that, for me, made it very real, having children, because the only thing I was thinking about, where they're going to put him under anesthesia, what if he doesn't wake up? And I, I did, but at the same time, too, like, just the mere thought of that, just, created Turn that emotion. Crazy thinking um, but like I said, we laugh, we joke. Of course, there's plenty of times where, I get, Jordan where I get that was going around. I get angry, you know. Like every time I, there are times I walk in the house and 
the house looks different than it was. Oh, we have a new addition. Somebody decided to put their artwork up on the wall. So, I mean, yeah, it's, and I'd be like, eh, eh, I guess that's <laughs> cute. She said she made me spirals with this one. Yeah. And then that one, she said she wanted to make me ease and smiley faces. Yeah, so I'm like, uh, yeah, can we just do that on paper? But, I mean, like we said, Damie's always been there. And with when it was just Damie, like, we had date night. Every Constantly, week. like every week, Dating and then the summers. Every week, the and summers we were had crazy. the family time. We had our time, and we had family time. <clears throat> the odd couple came on the scene. So Christopher spent two months in the NICU. I was gone for two months, and it's just he's so demanding. He's always been demanding because of everything that's going on with him. And then on top of him came Kai. So it was like never really any break. Whereas Damien, we had. You know, 15 and the, years. And the, the summers he would go and visit his dad. So we had, we so were we running around wild and free. You know, weekend trips, just yes. date night, just not now, having to worry about, okay, well. Not yeah, so much now yeah. because, Those times like, are, where do you find someone who wants to watch two toddlers? You know, with Christopher, with the autism and him having meltdowns. And my mom sometimes, she's like, I don't see how you do this, because it's a lot. So now it's changed a lot to where we don't have our date nights like that. And most of the time, our time becomes toddler time. Like we might try to catch a, watch a movie or something like that when the kids go down for a nap or when they go to bed. And then they always seem to wake up at the wrong time. <laughs> but so. we, we've tried to... We squeeze in a date night here and there. occasionally um, now and then. And it's much more appreciated now because, you know, you don't miss something until it's gone. Exactly. So, like, now when we go out, we like... This is nice. Yes. You know, just sitting there having an adult conversation. The last time we went out, we were sitting there, and we were just so happy to be out. We sat at the bar at Outback, and we met another couple, and we were sitting there having an adult they conversation, and it was like, hilarious. man... We got to run into them again. <laughs> yeah, we exchanged information and it was cool. It was cool. The kids is a beautiful thing, you know, especially even with the grandkids, you know, and we talked about it. We talk about it all the time. You know, I, I like I like our family, you know, our blended family. It was a it was. I'm gonna say it was a long road, even though it's only been three years. It's, it's it's come a long way, you know what I mean. And like I said, now it's it's to the point to where the dust has settled, you know. So now we're able to see things clearly. We're able to move about, you know. It's not a whole bunch of chaos, you know. Like she said, especially with having older boys, you know, another man coming into the house, you know, it's not the same. So. <laughs> I had to step into that, you know, easily, you know, watch my step. So it, it paid off. Do you have kids together? No yeah. kids together. We call um, <laughs> our grandchildren in my brain because none of them were born before we met. So all they know is PG, you know. <laughs> so um, we have the, our, our pretend kids. When we want kids, when we get that urge, <laughs> Bring them, and then when we get tired, send them back. <laughs> right. One thing is, I try. I try to love unconditionally. Meaning, even when I'm upset, even when I don't like her, I still love her. And I think that's important. Like even days, because there are days where I don't like her. There are hours when I'm at odds. It's like, who is this person? Who is this? I, I almost get, I almost get not angry at her, but angry at the person I think is here. Because I'll be like, that's not her. I, I get so angry. I'm like, who is this? And I really get angry. Like I don't like that person. But even in the midst of that, I love her. 
And I think if once I learned that, that keeps love is important. And I didn't always know what it was. Love is dangerous too, if if not handled properly. But even when I was upset with her, I still loved her in the midst of that. And believe it or not, I think that keeps things alive. Because without that, everything else is going to break. Like she, before she said, bend but not break. It's the love that keeps me from not breaking. But I try to do things to spice it up. I try different things, different, different, uh, different, different, different rooms. Different. I mean, I just try to keep the spice. I try to keep going. Oh, different house. Different, I mean, I'm just saying. I keep the spice. For me, <laughs> I think it's us. See all the new houses they building over there. I told you she might look at it. Oh, oh, oh. But go ahead. Wow. Just I'm all, just saying. all the way wild. Okay. I keep the spicy new cook, the spice. Spontaneous. I got, I got like a minute left on this microwave, but that stuff be done. Come on, girl, go on the <laughs> He is so telling the truth or you know even sometimes with the kids you know okay can we do this can we do that that's fine we'll all but then there's also times where we'll be like excuse me the door is being closed and locked if nobody is bleeding and everybody is breathing that's one thing about our family and I ain't saying no lie I ain't never seen this a day in my life but until now both of us could be in our bedroom chilling in the bed watching TV whatever we doing all three of the sons in the room on the bed with the grandbabies and the mamas. The baby mamas in, in there on the bed. Everybody's just right there. Yes, yeah. Now I got my feet at the foot of the bed like this. We're I told very her, I close said, knit. I said, well, look, look at your son head right there at my feet. He ain't paying no attention. <laughs> we're, I mean, we're just super close knit. But they know and they respect. And like he said, very honest. We don't, and I used to be, I don't know if it's because I grew up in church or what, but I used to be like real like, oh, certain words, certain actions, don't say, oh, not in front of the kids, oh, God. But he's very different. He's very upfront and open, you know. So it is what it is, you know, and they know, oh, God, that's them. Don't get in, we cannot come between them, you know, so we and get our, our time. Neighbors, our neighbors said, he said, man, every time I see y'all, y'all always together. He said, that's a good thing. I wish me and my wife would do that. I'm like, just do it. Like he said, spontaneity, whether it's lunch, whether it's, you know, whatever you can, just something. And time. one thing that this is a gift that I have, I have the ability to look at my wife, and I told her this, I have the ability to look at her as if it's my first time seeing her. To, and that automatic, automatically is going to take my mind back, you know, to that feeling of it's the first, you know, I just met, oh, my God, you know how that go, first six months you meet somebody type of deal, you know, and then you want to put your best foot forward. He touches me a lot. That keeps it very spicy, like, mm -hmm. un, like you know, we can be, he's a very touchy-feely guy, and I am, but, I, you know, you don't really meet guys like that a lot. So, you know, we can be at the eye doctor and he's talking and he's like, so, um, and at first it's like, excuse us. I, I'm but, not that blunt with it. I might go like this and hey, you know, something exactly. like that, but I don't just. <laughs> but I'm saying that to say as a female, it does. It keeps it very spicy because then it's like, and I can now tell I'm blushing. Too. And that's the key thing too. You got to pay attention. <laughs> see what, see what, what, what takes them to that climax and what keeps them at that climax. I think for me, it's always making sure he has it in his mind that we gotta always be doing something. That's, I, what's our favorite question that we ask each other? He gets tired. Sometimes I get tired. I but she's, that's right. We always gotta be doing something. What's our favorite question? You yeah. guys. What are we doing tonight? What are we doing this week? Yeah. Yeah. So, that's what I like. Maybe I'm going to ask a new question. How long are we going to relax this week? <laughs> How long are we going to relax this week? It's going to be extreme, man. We can't.
she but no, she, 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 she gets, for 10 hours. She, I, look. Game of Thrones is old. I, this is my last, ne next month, December, I'll be 49. That's my last See, month in the, the 40. This, this is the problem. See, we, I'll be 50 next you year. You want to make it to year 8? <laughs> I'm just saying. No. We got I got energy. Moving. I got energy. But we get it together. Ooh. Give me a go. Days of rest. I give, give me a, a sad go. here and there. We keep going, go. <laughs> you look at go. They be like, "What? We keep going, move." No. But no, it's it's good. I like the travel part, though. I like going places. Well, but it's not just that. I mean, it's even stuff. Even stuff. stuff. We just do local. It's just just staying active. Just making it interesting. That's how we make it. Mm -hmm. Just actively doing things together. And that was something that I had to learn because this is kind of what I used to do before we got married. But it was me. I mean, I would do stuff. I mean, I didn't have to have anybody to do anything with. And then when he came along and could step to that, it, it was a good thing. But... The fact that we do a lot together keeps it going. And sometimes it's a little bit too much. Sometimes you need the, the the interesting <laughs> thing though is is culturally and, and interest wise, we're very similar. Like we we're both mm -hmm. interested in our community. We we are very interested in our community. We're interested in our people. We're interested in other cultures, not just our culture. We're interested in, in different places, different communities. And I think when, she, when we're always doing something, that makes it good because we get the same joy sometimes mm -hmm. out of experiencing different things. People say, well, why did you go here? Like, why did you do this? Why did you do this? Mm -hmm. Why not? Why, why can't? Why shouldn't? We? You know, that's different. Let's learn that. Let's experience that. And I think that's... That, we both have that element in us, and that works out. So I guess when she said we always got to be doing something, the benefit is the things that we do, we both like. Right. It's, it's not. It's not really forced. Right. It's not forced. Oh, I'm just doing this because this is what he likes to do, and I'm just going to go along with it. So it's, it's not that. So that's what helps. Real quick, funny thing, the other day, the oldest grandbaby, she's two, I'm looking at my closet for shoes, and she walks up behind me and she smacks my butt, right? So her mom's like, what are you doing? She said, PG, do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's all the spice, we keep going, and everybody knows. <laughs>